Hey there, Julian from MemberStack here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a working username feature. So what that actually means is similar to any social media platform that you've used which has usernames, if you go ahead and try to choose a username and anybody else, doesn't matter how many people, one of them has those usernames, it's not going to let you. And if it's free, then it's going to let you and it's going to tell you that, well, it was successful, you're good to go. So I'm going to show you in just a minute what that looks like, but I want to start by saying here that we have already hooked everything up. We have member stack synced with Superbase. So if you don't have that yet, or you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, I would recommend watching that video. There's going to be a link to it right there in the description. So anyways, let me show you how this looks. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new account. Let's just call it Jennifer. Sanders, Janatsan.com, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Let's go ahead and hit sign up. So now here we are, as we can see, and we have this choose a username, change username bit. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and try to set it to this here, which is Julian and see what happens. So let's do that. Let's set it to Julian, hit change username. And as we can see, this username is taken. I'm gonna try another one. I'm gonna try member stack. Hit change username. Again, this username is taken. Please try another one. Now let's go ahead and do Gen S and change username. Your username has been set. And now depending on how fast this works, if I go ahead and refresh, we should be able to see Jennifer Sanders right there with that username now that it has been set. So anyways, next thing we're going to do is talk about how to do it. But first, I just want to take a quick step to say who this video is for, who is going to easily be able to follow it, who might be confused, so on and so forth. So if you're a Webflow beginner, I would definitely say this might confuse you. If you're kind of getting used to Webflow, wouldn't call yourself a beginner, this will confuse you. And even if you're great at Webflow, but your integrations, experience, code experience, whatever it may be, is limited, this video might confuse you a bit. If you're in that category, I would say watch it and you may be able to follow along. But if you're used to working with Webflow plus different integrations and doing some code, whether it's yourself with ChatGPT, you should be able to follow this. I am not really a developer by any means. So anyways, with that being said, let's get into it. And first things first, what we have is our front end. We have Webflow, of course. So Right here, we can see a couple of different things. And what is important are the following. We have a form input and we have a form. Then we have these two messages, the success and the error message. And all of these things, yours can be whatever, they can look however, do whatever, doesn't even need to be for usernames. But what's important is the WISD attribute. So first things first, our form has WISD and then username underscore form. All that's important is that yours has WISD. Other than that, name it whatever makes sense to you, what's going to be easy to identify, to remember, so on and so forth. So we have that. We have an input here which has WISD, form username input. We have the success messages and error messages, form message username good, and form message username bad. Again, name them whatever you want. This is just what made sense to me. So in Webflow, that is it. That is the important stuff. Then what we have is let's go ahead and go into WISD over here. And we need to know which member, which member stack member is trying to make this request. And so the way that we do that is first things first in the data store, you want to make a variable and call it member ID, just like that. And then have an action, which is in this case, mine is called get current member. And it is an event type when the page finishes loading, run this function, which is directly saying to member stack, hey, tell me who is logged in. And then it's going to take their ID and update that variable. So I'm going to put this code in the description. No worries. You can just copy it and use it. You shouldn't need to change anything. So now we have all of the prerequisites except for one thing, which is in your database. In this case, it's Supabase. Maybe you're using Airtable. Maybe you're using Firebase, maybe you're using Zeno, whatever it is that you're using, it should be pretty similar. In your table where you keep your members, what you want to do is have this field. This in this case is called the username, and it's set to is unique. And what that means is that if it exists anywhere in this table, it is going to cause an error and it's not going to work. It's not going to let it happen, which is exactly what we need. 
So anyways, now with that all being said and done, let's go ahead and go back into WISD and see what we have. First thing we need to do is make a request, of course, and ours is called update username, as you can see, and it is linked to our database, our Supabase database, and update item. We have our table set to members, so that is the name over here in Supabase. Where is it? Members, there we go. So we have that, and then we are getting it based on that member ID. So the person who's currently logged in using this variable right here, just return and then click that variable and you're good to go. Then what we wanna update is username. We wanna update that field and we wanna update it with the input value that was given to us here. So as you can see, you can see your input values right there. And if we take a look right over here and I start typing, you can see that it updates live with that. So WISD is gonna go ahead and grab that for you. You're good to go. This is the request, it's pretty simple. Then we've got some actions. So we have right here, update username. And what this is doing is it's applied to the event, uh, sorry, the element, which is the form right here. On event, submit. And we prevent default so that it doesn't try to be a standard Webflow form. And then in our action, we have perform request and that update username request that we've created. So that's it. That's what's actually going to make this work. After that, it's just UX and showing them, you know, what's going on so they're not confused. So we have two more requests, show username success message. So we have it linked to that attribute there that we've created in Webflow. Then we have set visibility, visible if return this request here. So as you can see, update username right here clicked to find status right there equals 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 which means well equals 200 so success if that happens we're going to show you're good your username is updated and then we have pretty much the same thing but it's equals 409 which is an error code that means there was a conflict it didn't work so that's what we're going to show them if there was a fail and then if you want to get really good with it and kind of keep it safe for everything then you can probably make another one to say if it's not 200 or 409, say there was some issue, we don't know what went wrong, please try again. Then you're getting real enterprise over there. So anyways, that's about it. That is how you do it. You can do this for a whole bunch of things, not just usernames, but this is one common example that I wanted to show you. So I hope this helped. Uh, leave a comment if it did. I'll talk to you soon and have a great day.